Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video on my channel. In this video, we will learn about getting online cryptocurrency data, for example, Bitcoin or Ethereum. Beforehand, we have to make sure we've installed the Pandas data reader module. For Anaconda, it is not installed by default, so you have to open up your terminal and type in conda install pandas minus data reader. If you're using IDLE, type in pip install pandas minus data reader. Now, let's import all those modules. We need the pandas underscore data reader dot data as, and I'm calling it reader here, the daytime module as dt, and our matplotlib module as plt. Now, let's get started. What do we need first? Well, we have to define a time horizon. So, from when until when we need data. Let's define the starting point by start, and then let's just take the first day of 2017. So, now, what's important, we have to transform this one here into a daytime object, otherwise it won't work. So we are just typing in dt.date and we're taking this one here as the argument. Done. Same logic for the end date. So we are just taking dt.date and now let's take all data until the end of 2020, which is in the future, but that's no problem for pandas as we are just getting the most recent date. So 2020, and we're just taking 12 and 31 here. Now we have to define the cryptocurrency we are interested in. So let's create a new variable, calling it crypto, and let's take a look at the Bitcoin first. So we are defining BTC minus USB here, which is giving us the relation to the US dollar here. After that, we are doing the actual online request. And we are storing this online request in a variable, which I'm calling the f. You can call it whatever you like. I'm keeping the f for data frame. Now, the online request is pretty simple. We are accessing the reader here, which is just our pandas data reader. We are taking reader dot, and now we are getting data by get underscore data. And here you have to define the data source. So the pandas data reader is providing some sources, but I'm sticking to the most popular one, which is Yahoo. Now we are providing our defined arguments here, which is, at the first place, our asset, which is our cryptocurrency here, which we defined as crypto, and then our starting date and our ending date here. Now let's execute that and actually print that out. So what we are getting here is a pretty comprehensive data frame, right? So we are getting adjusted, close, close, high, low, open, volume. But we are just interested in the close price, as we are not interested in daily fluctuations or something like that. We just want to know what was Bitcoin worth on that specific day. By the way, important, the adjusted close and the close price is the exact same when taking a look at cryptocurrencies. This is not true, for example, for stocks. Okay, so take that into consideration when you scrape stock data with the data reader. But I'm covering that, by the way, in my upcoming tutorials regarding Python for Finance. Whatever. We want to have a more lucid table. We want to we want to just use this column here. We want to use the close column. How can we achieve that? Well, we could do some data filtering here, but we can go a way more easier way by just changing the online request and add the argument that we only want the close column. So if we are executing that, we are getting a way more lucid table containing only the prices of bitcoins from the 1st January until today. Right? So that's pretty nice. Let's actually plot that to see what happens with the bitcoin chart. Well, as you see here, what is a pretty insane chart in my opinion is the big bubble here and then the explosion of that and then the recovery. And yeah, that's a pretty insane chart in my opinion. Now let us do one more thing, what's, what could be pretty interesting for you. So let's get back to our arguments here, so crypto. What if I want to compare Bitcoin, for example, to Ethereum? Well, I could extend this provided list here by another element, which I'm defining as ETH minus USD. So I'm getting the Ethereum price now. And if I'm just executing that and do the request again and again, we are just interested in the close prices of those two. I'm getting the new data frame containing of the Bitcoin prices and the Ethereum prices here. 
What I also consider to be important is a look at the plot of these prices here. So if we are plotting that by the f.plot, we're getting a kind of misleading chart here. So this chart could suggest that the Bitcoin was exploding even more than the Ethereum price, right? Which just did the small jump here. But this is actually not the case. The opposite is true. I did some deeper data analysis here, which I will reveal, by the way, once I have uh, 500 subscribers. If we are taking a look at cumulative returns here, we are seeing that the orange line is ETH and the blue line is BTC, so Bitcoin. We are seeing that the Ethereum price was exploding even more than the Bitcoin price, right? So take care about interpreting charts with different scales like that. Okay, this is my last advice for today. So I hope you really liked this video. Um, I'm looking forward for the upcoming ones. Thank you very much for watching and of course see you next time. Bye bye.